Okay, so now we want to scan the Bulbasaur with color. So I'm going to create a new directory, uh, ein star test 2. That's where we're going to place our scan. This time around I have an object and I will call this one a small object. And I will have still a feature alignment, but I definitely want to scan the texture as well. I'm going to click apply. Left the resolution as it was. And now I'm going to take my scanner. Click on the play button on the back once to enter the preview mode. And um, now it turns out that it's way too bright, which I can see in the preview window in the top left. So I'm going to double click the play button on the scanner on the back so I can use the plus and minus on the back of the scanner to adjust the brightness. And I want just a small speckling of red on my model. So I'm going to reduce the brightness. This looks pretty good. I'm going to keep it right there. And now that I'm happy with the brightness, I'm going to click the play button on the scanner again to actually begin my scan. On the left hand edge of the screen, there is a distance indicator that goes from blue, if I'm too far away, to green, to red. So you can see that I'm now scanning my model. Ah, a bit too far away. Do it like this. That looks pretty good. I'm going to move it in front of me. So we've made our first circle of my object. And then I'm going to rotate the scanner sideways so I can capture more data. trying to get the underside of that bulb, but it's not working that easily because um, it is still quite bright. I am not in the optimal scanning environment, but it does work. So I'm going to pause it here. Uh, I could now also use that data quality indicator that I talked about previously. So it says red for almost the entire model, but it's happy with that upside, upper side of the bulb. So I'm actually going to go back and scan a little more for this top area where it is saying that it doesn't have sufficient data. So I want to improve the scan this bit. Just hold the scanner there, rotate the model a bit, and we can see how more and more areas are going from red over to yellow and then green eventually as well. And this data uh, quality indicator is going to be a great help, really, when uh, scanning larger objects as well, just to give you an idea of, am I finished with my scan? Or should I you know, continue uh, as, uh, picking up some areas? And of course, you can still decide uh, the way I will in a minute. I'm going to say that this is actually good enough, and I'm happy uh, with some of the red areas that do still exist, because I say uh, that the uh, data here is now uh, sufficient for my purpose. I still want to scan the underside of this Bulbasaur because obviously I haven't touched that at all and I'm still missing quite a lot of data for the overall model. So I'm going to pause again and have a look at this. Doesn't look too bad. I'm actually quite, quite happy with this. Um, so let's make a point cloud out of that bit already. And then we're going to clean it up, delete the table, and then I'm going to flip it and uh, scan some of the underside. Going to remove this sticker that is on the bottom so we don't scan that. So once again, I'm going to use the cutting plane to get rid of everything underneath. And this time around, I'm going to use the create a straight line. So I'm going to look at it from the front, hold shift, and then draw my line, fix it a little bit. I 
like that. Create my plane. Oh, I dropped the little low back there, so I'm going to lift it until everything is marked red that I want to delete. I'm going to click Apply to get rid of all the, the table stuff. And now I still want to under, uh, scan the underside of this model, so we're going to have a look at how that works. OK. So there's an Align button, uh, but I can't use that because I don't have anything that I want to align with this model. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to click on Project Group and add a new project. Once again, Object, Small Model, Features, same resolution, click Apply. And now I'm going to scan the underside of this model with that same way, and then we can align those two project groups together. So I'm in the preview. I'm going to reduce the brightness one more step and then start scanning. And this time, get the underside of those legs. That looks much better. If you do lose tracking, you simply have to return to an area that you scanned uh, previously. And then the tracking will find itself again, as you can see, most of the time anyway. There we go. Now that I'm holding it properly, forgot my wrist strap. I'm going to take that. OK. So I'm going to rotate that model. I want to hold the scanner sideways too to capture more data, get a little closer. Oh, and my tracking was lost. There we go. Could have enabled texture tracking as well. That might have actually worked a little better with how much color there is on this model. Uh, for many models, I prefer the uh, features alignment if they have enough features to work with. Um, so this works. Really want to get the underside of the face as well, because that's something we couldn't scan earlier from above. So I want to make sure I get all of that. Oh, that was a bit too fast. There we go. This is looking much better now. And then if we combine those two scans together, that should hopefully yield a good result. Once again, I could use the quality indicator after this as well. Uh, I'm not going to in this case because it's just a demo part. I don't need uh, superior or perfect quality. But if this was an actual production part or something I was scanning for a customer, I would go and check the data quality indicator and then rescan certain areas to yield a better uh, overall scan result and get a better model in the end. So I'm going to click the pause button because I'm now satisfied with this, as this is the entire underside of my model. And I'm going to click and generate my point cloud. So that's now my point cloud from below. Once again, I want to look at it from the side, use the cutting plane with a straight line. Shift mouse button and draw the line to get rid of everything that I don't want. Create that cutting plane. We can see it deletes everything I don't like. I'm going to click the apply button. So all of that unwanted data is deleted. Now we just have to align my bottom and my top half. And then we're done with this print. So now I'm going to click the align button on the right hand side of the screen that is now available. And then create project 1 in window 1, project 2 in window 2. And I am just going to try and use the feature auto align. So I'm going to click apply and see whether the software is good enough to align these two models now with the features that I've scanned. And voila, it managed almost immediately. That was a very quick one. And this is now my combined model. Obviously, it does still have some holes. For example, I didn't scan the inside of the mouth because that's A, very difficult to get to, B, because I went a little bit too quick. But the result overall is very impressive. If this hadn't worked, I would have also had the option to go with a manual feature alignment where I could have selected certain points on the two models that I wanted uh, to give the software basically as a starting point for the alignment process. Or I could have done a marker alignment 
or uh, a marker manual alignment. But I don't have markers on my model, so that would not have worked. I'm gonna click next and then exit because now my model is good enough. I'm satisfied, I am going to mesh this and this time around I'm gonna use a, an unwatertight model. I don't want these holes to be filled. Just uh, click apply with the parameters that are recommended and then I am finished scanning this model as well. I'm gonna save it as it is and then continue working with it in a third party software. So that was the basic scanning experience with the Shining 3D Einstar scanner. You could see that it's a fairly fast process. Connecting it is real easy. There's just a single cable that goes from the scanner to the PC. And then the scan process itself, you click the button on the back once to get the preview. In that preview, you adjust the brightness of uh, using that preview window that you had. And then once the brightness uh, is correct, you click the play button again to start the scanning process and then either move around your model or move your model in front of you. Now I scanned two very difficult models here. Uh, for the majority of uh, models that you might want to scan, this process will be even faster and even easier because with about 42, I believe, by 37 centimeters, so it's like 432 by 375 millimeters or something as the field of view, the scanner actually sees quite a lot uh, in one go. And then depending on the scan distance, you can really get a very good result with uh, fairly low effort. So for this one, the main difficulty was getting around the edge and the fact that it's a black model. And for this one, that it was fairly small and has lots of deep gaps, uh, for example, here around the bulb and inside the mouth. And uh, getting a scanner to see all that is quite challenging. But you could see that the alignment worked really well and the color mapping was actually also very impressive. Um, what else did I wanna say? Right, so this scanner, especially with a human mode as well, might actually be one of the best handheld entry scanners that I've ever seen. Uh, it is a great addition to anyone that already has something like an Einscan SE, uh, like a fixed tabletop scanner, or the Einscan SP, for example. But even for people that are looking at, at some point, going into other handheld scanning devices, this is amazing because at its price point, the quality it delivers and the scanning experience is really impressive. Um, so anyone that has that Einscan SE or SP and wants to scan larger models or take the scanner on the go, go outside and scan maybe, I don't know, statues in a park or something, uh, then this Einscan, uh, no, this Shining 3D Einstar is the best choice you can make. For anyone else that is maybe considering uh, I, uh, one of the Einscan series scanners, this might be the better entry model because it basically does the same things as the Einscan H, but way cheaper. And it has a lot of features that are actually not available for the Einscan H. This data quality indicator and the hair mode when scanning humans are things that are unique to this scanner. So overall, I must say I'm extremely impressed with what I've seen here and I'm, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with the result, especially at the price point where the scanner is at. I could now fix the texture, brightness, and the contrast if I wanted to. Um, click confirm. Once again, I could do this cutting plane to cut away the bottom, make it really nice and flat, and then align the entire uh, coordinate system to that cutting plane. But I've already shown you how to do that with this black scan. So I think I'm gonna call it a day here and just say I've shown you how the scanning works. The only thing I didn't really show you was the human scanning. Hopefully I'll have another video on that in the future when I can convince a colleague to stand here with me and let me scan him. And uh, other than that, I hope I answered any and all questions that you may have had when starting this video. If there are any questions that remain, please leave them below the video and I'll do my very best to answer them. So without further ado, I wish you a great day. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.